Hello, this is Bridget Rao with Divine Essentials. We're moving on with day two of the self-healing journey. And I did see a question come in yesterday, but I wasn't signed into the channel that the question came in on. And they were asking about the long distance Reiki. And I do plan on responding to you personally. Thinking about doing that, $99. I'm doing like the in-person for $150, but the one that I'm going to do online because I'm not there personally with you. I was going to do it for $99 and it was going to be in like a Facebook group where I can go live with you and all of that. So that's what that will be. And if it's $99, I will probably have a payment plan option on my website where you can do three payments of 33. Try to get that set up as soon as possible so that people can sign up for that, choose a date for it and all of that. So hopefully you're on Facebook. If not, I can also record it and then send it to you privately. So we're doing day two and what I figured I would do here is also let you know like we're opening sacred space right now we're clearing the energy we're getting it all nice and nice I'm a little bit chilly so I'm all wrapped up and I'm also all about being my authentic self right now so this is me baby this is my authentic self I'm comfy cozy and when you want to like clear the energy in your space, you can get like one of these and go through your whole house. You can use sage, you can use Palo Santo. And when you're opening up sacred space or getting ready to do self healing, you don't have to be like, I'm going to do this. Blah, 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 blah. You can literally say Reiki on, you could say Shambhala on, you could say like key on because key is energy. So what I did yesterday with the healer's right, that's from the Mune key. Mune means love, key means energy. So at the end of everything, when I'm like, in Mune, namaste, that means in love. In namaste is I recognize you as one of me. So basically, just to save time and all of that, we're going to just say Reiki on. And that's as simple as it is. And I will get into some of the other ways to open up sacred space, call in protection and all of that throughout the series. But... Today, because we are just getting started, I wanted to show you some of the hand positions, which I'm not somebody that's a stickler with these. I actually feel like when I went through the, the Reiki, they gave us very specific ones and they're like, do this for three minutes and a lot of the Reiki music comes with three minute marks. But when you go to the new paradigm, they throw out all limitation on like having to use a certain symbol or having to use a certain position. And I like that because and I know a lot of other people do too, because they may not be comfortable with their hand in that place, or they're missing something significant because the hand positions are very limited. So it's like we start at the top of the head, we could go over the eyes, we could go over the ears, we could go over the throat, we could go on the shoulders when we're doing healing for someone else, we could do the heart, the solar plexus down here on the, on the sacral, and then we hover over the root. We don't want to be touching people's bitties. Now, if somebody comes to me and they have breast cancer or cancer somewhere down there and they're comfortable with me putting my hands right on them, that's one thing. But we always want to check in with who we're healing. And if it's ourselves, we can touch whatever we want, okay? That's our body. We can do what we want. I also do some things like when I'm working on people and um, they're laying on their back on the table. Sometimes I will slide my hand back here, like if they've got sciatica issues. I slide my hand in there, and people seem to really like that one. Um, sometimes I slide my hands up, like, underneath them back here, and they really like that too, especially if they are holding a lot of weight and things like that. Some people really like pressure pushed onto them. It's up to you how you feel guided, and another part of doing healing is to scan ourselves, okay? So what I want to do is just show you the, the scanning part, and then let you go wherever you're guided to go. Don't worry about the limitations of the hand positions, and I will show you some additional ones. Basically, when we're scanning ourselves, or even another person, we're gonna start at the crown, and we're gonna just feel the energy. And we're gonna scan slowly to feel for any dips or like blocks. So for me, when I'm scanning somebody, a lot of times it goes and it goes and it goes, and then all of a sudden, I'll feel like a resistance. It doesn't stop, it's not like it's a, a physical wall or a barrier, but it just feels like resistance. Other people feel a shift in the temperature. Other people feel a dip or a rise, and that's, that's okay. And then when we're doing this, right, 
we're scanning like the whole body and we're looking for anywhere that feels just a little bit different you know and I, I know I like myself right now I'm you know in my menstrual cycle so it would be normal that I might feel something different here and want to focus on doing some self-healing there but if I'm having like a cold or something I may feel some resistance up here and want to do some healing here now as we go out we have our physical body our emotional body our spiritual body and our mental body are a, a, around us in our aura so sometimes when I'm scanning a person I may not feel something like connected to their physical well-being but more their emotional or their spiritual or their mental well-being and you'll get better at that okay but I just want you to know that it's not just here that something may be going on in the physical world you may get a resistance at their solar plexus which is connected to their confidence and they may be having a lot of anxiety and so you may feel something around this area and want to like pull that off and get that cleared up and spend some time doing some healing there okay start at the top and it might be good to close your eyes and again reiki on and let's scan from above and see if you can feel any shift in the temperature, any resistance in the movement, any rising or falling. And if you don't and you're you don't you're just intuitively guided somewhere, let yourself go where you're guided to go. And this is good to practice on other people too because when you practice on someone else, they can confirm to you like, "I can't believe you just stopped there. I have something like this going on." When I did my Reiki 1 class recently, I was showing this person how to do the scanning and I was guided to stop here. And she she was like, I've got to tell you, you know, I'm going to the doctor in like a week because they've I, I found like a, a lump there and they're not sure if it's like this thing, this thing or this thing. We worked on doing some healing there. And I've had other people come at different times where I was like doing healing on them and was guided to like their throat and lo and behold they had some cancer scare there and they came back like a week later and like it's totally gone it's awesome sauce but in that one some crazy stuff happened like I wasn't the only one to start because there was a person watching that healing and it was like somebody like a spiritual guide came over me you could see it and an arm or a hand went right into their throat and pulled something out and when they came back they were like oh my god you saved my life and I was like no it's not us I didn't save your life you're not saving someone's life. Spirit is acting through us. You know, superimposed arm that went into them wasn't my arm. So always remember that too. It's not us. But that is what we're doing. We're scanning. And let me know in the comments if you feel anywhere that feels different. And then think about it and tell me, does it make sense to what's going on in my body? And when you find it, just spend a few moments there until you feel like you've, you've sent enough healing there. Okay? If you have anxiety or stress, you can just pull it off. If you're having imbalance in your relationships, you can clear that up. If you're struggling to speak your truth, you can work on that. And it's really anywhere that you feel guided to go and anything that could be going on in your life. And I do recommend spending some time at each, you know, space or place. We get the crown chakra. Just want to open up. We've got the third eye. We want to see clearly. And that's interesting. As I put my hands here, I start seeing the circle of the light there, which I shouldn't be seeing because I'm blocking it even more, you know. But as I put, when I release this, there's no light there. There's no circle there. But when I put my hands there, the ring light circle is there. And then the throat to help us speak our truth authentically heart, to love compassionately, our solar plexus for confidence and strength, our relationships with ourselves and others, and our root for safety and security. And over the next few days, I will be continuing to go deeper into these things. We'll talk more about each one of the chakras. We'll talk more about opening up all of this stuff. And if you have any questions or anything specific you would like to know, let me know. But I know as we're getting into this, I've got to kind of cover the basics of like, you know, where you should put your hands and why you should be putting them there and all of that. 
Thank you very much. In Rene, namaste.